All right, I'm going to talk through the latest update to Boombox, the 1.3 update. This includes the multiple impacts uh, and a handful of other features, multiple impacts being the uh, by far the, the biggest update. So I'm just going to walk through a, a little example to explain all the features. So typically, you start Boombox and you get your velocity gizmo, you get your pieces, uh, you get your fracture, and let me let me just crank this a little bit just to show you. And that's what we would normally get. You get your impact gizmo, which you can set your initial velocity. And you can also, uh, I have just a few curves drawn here. I'll just plug these in. Uh, you can also plug in um, your custom curves. And what will happen is they will all um, sort of explode at the same time regardless of how many curves you have in. That's just, uh, that's just if you fed in 100 curves, it'll, they'll all happen at the same time. Now that was the previous versions. Now the request came in that, hey, what, what, what can we do to maybe stagger those out? That'd be a nice thing to have. So that's, that's mainly what this update's about. So if you look in your global controls, now if you tick on multiple impacts, I'm gonna slide down just to show another thing that changes when you do this. So typically in your velocity tab, you've got all these controls for your impact gizmo, but now when you click multiple impacts, the velocity gizmo goes away because it, it's not useful anymore. It doesn't make sense to have it. And you have, um, let me reset these to, um, these aren't the default values. I was recording this earlier, but so your, the values will be a little bit different, but you still get this, you still get these parameters. So now just by clicking this on without doing anything else, what happens is we have a staggered uh, explosion uh, based on these parameters and based on the number of input curves. So I'm going to, I'm just going to demonstrate again. Now I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to start on the right side and draw these curves towards the left. And so now when we do this, they're going to explode in the direction that you draw them. Or if you're merging in multiple curves, they're going to, the impacts are going to be ordered in the sort of the order that you feed those into your merge node. So to, to dig in a little bit to what's happening here, on each of these curves um, inside our HTA, what's happening is there's a, um, there's a boom attribute. And we can, if, if, that, if you want to see that, you can uh, click here left click on the boom attribute and make sure this boom viz is uh, is toggled on. So you're going to have this frame marker that tells you what frame your impacts are happening or when your impacts are happening. So by default, um, that's just based on the input order, as I said, but we have these few uh, attributes or we have these few parameters that will um, give you more control over that. So if you want, let's turn our multiply boom frame off. And then you'll see this is just one, two, three, four. Now we've got a frame offset, which is always clamped at one. Um, now this can go as high as you need it to. And I'm sure a lot of people don't start their projects at frame one. You can set this to whatever frame you need to. Um, but by default, it is at frame one and you can offset that. So it starts at whatever integer value you want. So five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna leave it to one for the time being. And this multiply boom frame, what that's going to do is this sets the interval between the um, between each curve. So if you set that to four, by default it's six. So you're going to have frame, you're going to have impacts that are at six, 12, 18, 24. Um, but you set that to whatever you want. And let's turn that off. Now, if you want to completely randomize this, you just click randomize boom frame. And what's going to happen is you set a minimum frame. Uh, so always wise to probably set that at, at one and then your your maximum frame value can be so you want these to be randomly distributed between say one and 30 and that's what's happening here we have one at 21 10 8 and 14 and you have a random seed to control that and if we turn this off our boom visualization turn that off and hit play you can see you have that those random impacts now, if, if that's not enough, if you want even more control, um, the thing to do is to just select custom boom frames. And I'll show you uh, quickly how you can um, do this. I'm just going to drop down a line to make sure it has a decent amount of points. Let's plug this in here. And you can see that our guide updated to a single line. I'm just going to drag that over here. Do another one, merge them together, and then 
drag this over here. Okay, now if we hit play, nothing's gonna happen because we don't have any um, boom integer attribute. So let's create that. Let's just drop down an, an attribute create and we're gonna make sure it's point. We're gonna set it to integer and we're gonna define it as boom. And we're gonna have its value for this first one. Let's have that value be 10. We're gonna copy this and then change it to 30. And now if we hit play, so at frame 10, 30, we're good. Let's check out our, uh, I wanna visualize our velocity just for a second and I wanna add a little more radius to that just so that, that uh, those first few pieces actually blow up. There we go. So that that's sort of in essence that covers the, uh, um, the multiple impacts and how to set that up. And, the short version is you feed curves in, those curves will either inherit from the tool a uh, integer boom attribute that'll define the frame that it, the impact happens. And if you wanna do customize that, uh, just tick on custom boom frames and then define that as you wish. So I'm gonna plug this back in, tick those off, um, do multiply, uh, change that to four. And now I'm just gonna have my my impact's happening that way. All right, and I'm actually gonna turn this down a little as well. And then on to the next feature. So another request came in. Uh, you may have in the past uh, used this static group option. Let me make sure that we're visualizing that. So static group bounds. Uh, now by default, what happens is this is set up to sort of hold pieces in place. It says, you know, these pieces are now never, ever, ever gonna move. And if we turn off our constraints and we do this, yeah, so those pieces are never moving. But a user asked, hey, what if, for his scenario, he said, hey, it would be actually be really helpful if rather than defining uh, inactive pieces, what if you could just define the active pieces? So I just added an invert option here. So now, um, now what the attribute we're visualizing is the active attribute. So white ones are inactive, red ones are active. Uh, so now, just by inverting that group, you can sort of define active pieces uh, by the group bounds. So another nice little feature that, uh, if you need it, is really helpful. Um, may go unnoticed by many people, but it's there if you want it. Um, another nice feature that I've added into, into the tool is um, the ability to color pieces. And this happens internally, this happens post-SIM, so you can adjust these on the fly without needing to recalculate anything. Um, now, this was always possible, of course, but you, in previous versions, you would have to do it um, sort of after your, uh, after your boom box. And you'd have to define, you have to split out the inside versus outside pieces or make groups. Uh, but now you just do that within the tool and it's really easy. These are vertex colors and um, they will hold through to your materials as long as you set those up correctly. And speaking of materials, we've also added uh, the ability to define outside and inside materials. This outside material is a sort of bright white, the inside's a red, and uh, these are just principal materials for the sake of demonstration. And they will also, as I said, those will hold the uh, colors that are uh, incoming on the geometry as well. That covers the some updates to the fracture settings. And then the very last update is the uh, ability to delete the disconnected faces or delete the connected faces. So if I drop down, sorry for being scattered with my UI here. If I drop down a clip, all right, so you can see that internally, all these faces are still here. And if this were a, if this were to be rendered as a semi-transparent object or a transparent object, that would be super problematic. So on the tool now, there is the option to delete connected faces. And what that does is, um, actually, let me, if I turn on my constraints, that's gonna be a little bit more, yeah, that's gonna be a little bit more obvious to see. So when all of the pieces are connected, and even if I turn this off and let's look at just our wireframe, 
as all these pieces are connected, there's no internal faces, but when they break apart, you can see those internal faces become visible and that's really helpful for rendering. So those are the boombox updates. Uh, the, these are these are actually huge updates. Uh, it makes it even more useful than it was. So if you haven't picked this up already, check it out on Gumroad, buy it if you'd like. Um, if you're interested in this and you uh, find it useful, you'll probably also really like Bus Duster. You can grab that combo or you can buy them individually, um, however you want to do it. Right now on Gumroad, the the combo price and the individual price are exactly the same. So if you have one and you can pick up the other, if you don't have either and you want to buy both, it, it all shakes out the same. So check those out. And if you do have, if you already have Bus Duster, check out this next video that will go over the, uh, the new updates for it as well. So thanks so much. Follow me all the places to get all the updates. Thanks.